in the previous two examples with Bach's prelude number one and prelude number two, I've been calling into question the Western classical traditional notion that composer is the creator of the music, suggesting that playing and listening can be as creative and imaginative as composing of music by interpreting and using our imagination and listening to different things, highlighting different things in our musical experience. I'd like to imply that this Western notion of the dictator being the sole oracle to the truth leading to many of the problems that we have today of inequities, injustices, and even things like climate change, which I believe stem from our profit-driven, profit human-centric worldview. That was a very big statement to make, I realize, but I would like to reframe our musical experience and thereby our worldview by suggesting a more democratic way of thinking about things like our communal musical experience as an act of sharing and resonating with each other. So I will not analyze prelude number three the way I did prelude number one and two and just play and leave it up to your imagination as to what I am doing in the process of interpreting Bach's score and I welcome you to use your imagination and creativity in the act of listening and interpreting my interpretation of Bach's prelude number three from Walton per Clavier book one. <laughs> than prelude number one or two, but it was also a broken down arpeggiated chordal figures, right? So as long as the composers have to deal with, have to write within the already existing musical idioms in order for his or her music to be communicative or mean anything to the listeners. And as long as we are all dealing within the physics of acoustics and what we understand music to be, none of us are unique or um, original or the sole creator of anything. Um, Let's leave it at that. <laughs>